Okay, so what we're building to in the last couple of uh, videos then is this LED flasher that we're going to build with a relay. And in the last video, we had it boil down to a sort of understandable schematic here. And what we were hypothesizing here is that if we connect this to 9 volts through this uh, circuitous path here, but it passes through the switch that's inside the relay, we're going to get the RC circuit to start charging. And when the voltage to this point rises, as we know it does in RC circuits, this point above the capacitor, when it rises to a certain point, this relay coil will become energized. And when it does, this little switch up here, the switch inside the relay, is going to get pulled down to this position. And when it gets pulled down to that position, the RC circuit is no longer connected to the battery. Look at this gap is here. The switch is in the other position now. It's like the power has been shut off to the RC circuit. But the capacitor is still charged, still has positive charges and negative charges on it, which are just solely now allowed to bleed through the coil of the, of the re relay here, discharging the capacitor. And when the capacitor's charge becomes low enough, this voltage will become low enough as well the magnetic field that's inside this coil, which is holding the switch in that position, will no longer be able to hold it. The switch is going to pop back up to that position, charging the capacitor once again. The cycle repeats itself. So the issue before us now is can we take the little black relay, who's by virtue of the manufacturer's data sheet, says that the pins we see on the bottom correspond to these pins, the coil is here, and the switching and all that business is in here. Can we translate this into this? That's what we're going to try to do in this video so off we go. Here's the breadboard. Now the first thing that might happen to some of you at least is when you try to put this relay in, remember we don't want, don't want to put it just anywhere. We need to maintain independence of all these pins. So we always want to put these things so they straddle that gap in the breadboard. This is the first time that we've addressed the need of the gap there to keep those top pins separated from those bottom pins. But what you notice here is some of you might notice that the relay doesn't really stay in the breadboard all the way and that's just a, some manufacturing artifact. So that's why we had you buy a couple of these sort of large, these are for putting integrated circuits into circuit boards, but we're going to use it for the relay. So we're just going to go ahead and pop the relay right into this here, make some good connections, nice good connection there. And now with these really long pins, we'll go into the breadboard, straddling the gap, and now we have a nice electrical connection there. So the relay is just double high on there, but it's in there nonetheless. Okay, so why don't the first thing we do, since we know that the RC circuit is the one used in the timing, Let's just go ahead and go at it then. I'm going to start with the 2200 microfarad capacitor. Mine are big and blue like this. I'm just going to build my classic RC circuit because that's most intuitive, what's most intuitive to me. That's where my timing is going to come from. So I'm putting the capacitor in here like this. And sort of to complete my RC circuit, I'm going to use the 100 ohm resistor here. So this is a brown, black, brown. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the breadboard here as well. And there we go. So don't lose sight of all what the components are doing for you. We've got the relay installed, haven't used anything with it yet. This is my classic RC circuit. So if I grounded this side and applied a voltage to this side, I'd see the voltage at this midpoint start to rise. That's the way RC circuits work, and they're going to continue to work that way. They won't stop working just because I'm using them in an RC circuit here. So I'll go ahead and connect my power in here so I'll know that that's my positive and that's my negative here. And that's, by the way, why I put the, real, the other side of the capacitor with all the big negative markings here on this side so it goes right into the negative supply of the battery there. Okay, so what we said sort of in our, in our ideas here is that we wanted that midpoint of the capacitor, that midpoint of the capacitor here of the RC circuit right above the capacitor, we wanted that to go into the coil of the relay so it can start to charge. And that coil of the relay, if you turn it upside down and try to visualize, is all the way over here. It's not the rightmost column, but it's the one right next to that rightmost column there, right next to it. Because again, the bottom view of the relay has me sort of looking at something like this here. I have a series of four pins like this, and the coil are on those two right there. So by connecting this line from the midpoint of the voltage divider, that place where the voltage is rising, to the top of the coil there, I'm essentially doing that connection there. When the voltage rises here high enough, that coil will get energized. And of course, the coil needs to be in a completed circuit. And so the other side of the coil, which is on this pin over here, again, not all the way over, but one over from the right there goes to ground. So I need to connect the coil to ground. And so on the circuit right here, essentially what I've done over here is I've taken... 
Here's my RC circuit. There's ground right there. I've taken this midpoint right here and I've connected it right to here and I've grounded the other side of the coil because we need to make a complete circuit and remember that it's the coil's job to discharge the capacitor. So if you want, you can draw some squiggly lines in there indicating the coil. Okay, so that's all I've done thus far. Okay, two wires. Okay, so that should connect the, uh, the growing RC circuit in there properly. Next, what we want to do is we want to handle this interesting and sort of intricate charging idea here that we want the power only to get onto the RC circuit when the relay is sort of in its normally closed position. So to do that then, I'm going to connect the top of the RC circuit with this green wire right to the side that's very next to the coil, like this. And so what that has done for me here, I've essentially just connected the top of the RC circuit to this side of the relay. Again, no connection in here. There's no connection, no dot there. The wires are just happen to take the same space on the schematic, but there's no connection there. Because remember, when the relay is in the normally closed position, then this line right here is connected to this line. I've just realized that, of course, this is the bottom view of the relay, not the top view. So, of course, actually what I've just done is the coil is okay. I think the lines are just backwards, but that's okay for the coil. Because I've actually done this, haven't I? Because I know when the relay coil is in its normally closed state with no energy on it, then the connection sort of looks like this, doesn't it? That's what the relay looks like. So that's what I've done. I just sort of have this big wire here. I put in, I thought I put in this green wire that I put in right here is this big one right here. Okay, so I think we're doing fine here. Okay, and now of course the next thing I want to do is in that normally closed position when the switch is down, I want the nine volts to start charging the RC circuit up. So these two lines here, just pick one. I want to connect that directly to nine volts. So when the relay is in this so-called normally closed position there, we'll get the, some good charging going on in there. So let's just get that wire in there. Looks like I'm running a little bit short on wires here, so I'll just sort of use this long one here. So I'll sort of take this wire right here and connect it directly to 9 volts. So it's a very long wire in there, but what I've done now is I've just connected this pin right here to my plus 9 volts. That's what I've done there. Okay. So that way when the relay is in this closed position, the 9 volts, the current can flow through here over to the RC circuit and get that capacitor charging up. Okay. And believe it or not, I'm nearing completion. I think, in fact, we are done even here. There is one other thing we're going to add, which I'll show you, but I think I, we've got everything in there. I mean, I see a scenario here where when power is connected, the RC circuit is going to charge. When the voltage reaches a high enough voltage here at this midpoint of the RC circuit where the capacitor is or here at the top of the capacitor, the coil will become energized. It'll pull the switch to the other position, and the capacitor should, should discharge. Let's connect it and see what we get. And off we go. You hear that clicking noise in there? I'm putting the microphone right up next to the relay. The relay is ticking away. So we've successfully made the RC circuit. The relay is ticking away. In the next video that we're getting kind of long here at about nine minutes, we're going to learn how to put a flashing light in there so we can see the LED flashing and wrap it up. But stop if you will and just appreciate what you've done.